Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Tim. Tim is from London and he's a singer and he got a band called Morning Crush. So let's see what Tim has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Not a problem at all. Good, good to meet you. Well. You too, nice to meet you Tim. So just uh, before we start the game, just tell me where are you from? I'm from Southwest London in Kingston. Right. And, uh, so what do you do for a living? I work at Banquet Records in Kingston, which is a record shop and gig promoter, and I play music. Right. I have lo- yeah. Before COVID, I had loads of different live live music jobs, but obviously they don't exist now. <laughs> it's gonna go back. To, it's gonna go back soon. That's for sure. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah. The hope. That's the dream. Right. And I know that you have um, a band called Morning uh, Morning Crush. So tell me a little bit about it. The band. Well, it's, it's sort of like my songwriting project. Um, there's various people involved. Uh, it is a band, technically, but I, for some reason, always call it a project as opposed to a band, just because it's like me and different producers, and uh, whatever musician wants to get involved is involved. But there is like a set group of people. So yeah, we'll call it a band. <laughs> um, it's, uh, uh, it's been called sort of sad indie music. It's influenced by people like Neil Young, um, Bright Eyes, Frank Turner, uh, Bob Dylan, that sort of stuff. Um, just released our first few singles, and yeah, it's going all right. It's only been going for a few months, so it's fairly new. Um, but been... Yeah, so much yeah. better. How long you've been working this project? So it's been a few months you've been working on it. Well, we've been working on it for over a year, but it's only been public. Uh, the first single's only been public for a few months um, in November, which was mixed by Frank Turner, who, uh, if you haven't heard of, he's a great folk punk singer songwriter. He's one of my favorite songwriters um yeah and i was it was an honor to work with him and what's the name of the, 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 the song you've been working on well there's been a few uh we just released one called australian sun um, australian. okay yeah and, and there's there's been a couple more as well there's been three singles in total all right and if i ask you to sing a little bit in the end um your new um your new one would you like i would be able to yeah i'd love to yeah yeah, yeah. perfect yeah. Okay, team, so welcome to William and the Magic Box. Are you ready? I'm so excited. I'm yeah. so excited, yeah. Let's are do it. Go, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life, your point of views, etc.? Okay, yeah, I will, yeah. I'm, I'm cool. ready, ready and excited. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to play a music just for us to gay and uh, get in the mood before the first question. Okay, let's do it. Of course. Okay. Cool. Right. Yeah, it helps you to, to move a little bit. I'm not much of a dancer, I'm more of a singer. <laughs> Ready for the first question? Let's do it. The first question is, what does love mean to you? Everything. Everything. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I wasn't very good at it for many years, um, uh, but uh, it means a lot to me now, yeah. Do you believe that there are different kinds of love? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think the love I have for Domino's Pizza is much different to the love I have for my mother. But I, I agree with you. I think love, there, you know, there are different kinds of love for different, like for your pets, for your partner, for your family. But I think all of Absolutely, them are yeah. a very special place. Like they're all the same feeling. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah, loads, of different, loads of different types of love. Cool. Let's go for the second question. Let's do it. Right, just before the next question, Tim, uh, tell me what do you like the most about London? Oh, that's a very tough question. I have to say Banquet Records, where I work, the record shop. And that is amazing, it's an amazing record shop. And I'm very proud to work there, so check out Banquet Records. Where's which this? is technically Kingston, and there's a great debate about whether Kingston is actually London or not, but I'm saying it is, and I'm saying cool. Banquet Records. Good, very good. Next question is, um, what is your favorite place in the entire world, and why you consider that? My favorite place in the entire world um, putting aside Kingston and London, which will always be in my heart, is a place called Demre, uh, sort of Antalya in, in Turkey. Um, I lived in Demre for a while, which was a little village, and I worked and sung in a hotel there 
and it was absolutely magical and I loved the culture, I loved, I loved the people, I loved everything about it um, and I'd love to, love to go back there one day. How long, how long were you there for? Uh, a summer. From what, I can't remember exactly but it was, it was over a summer. Um, yeah, it was beautiful. I loved, I loved it. The weather, the people, the food, everything. It's just great. Good um, memory. But it's a top. It's a top call. I love, I love, so I, 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 you travelled around, played music quite a lot. But I think, yeah, that's up there. Definitely. Very good. Very good. Another question for you. Yeah, okay. One, yeah. What is your most embarrassing moment? When I was. Okay, when I was about 13 years old, I was playing a rugby game um, and I didn't know but my eyesight was getting bad. And anyway, I was running with, with the ball and I dived over the line thinking I'd scored a try, thinking I'd got a try. But I'd missed the line, it was the line before. So I just dived on the floor for no reason. And I got up and celebrated and the whole team was looking at me like, what are you doing? That's not, that's not a try. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, no. Yeah, that was very embarrassing. I've never forgotten about that. And that was, what, like 15 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. Yeah. Right, let's get another question for you, Tim. Before the next question, I was, I was checking your profile and I saw um, you post something uh, about a, a song that wrote called Accepting the, um, Depression, yeah? Yes, yes. Tell me a little bit about the song. Uh, the one I put in my story, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have, I have depression and, uh, and anxiety. I've had it for most of my life. And um, uh, yeah, I wrote that song about, uh, about accepting it and um, trying to explain it and all sorts of different things. Because uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a constant, it's a constant thing. A lot of people think you can be treated. Well, it's different for different people, but for me, I've accepted that I'm going to have it for the rest of my life and it's going to come and go and it's going to get better and worse. And it, it was kind of, it was inspired by Stephen Fry. When I, when I first started learning about depression, Stephen Fry's uh, said that um, it's just something that if the harder you try and fight, the harder it's going to be to fight. And actually accepting it as kind of a temporary thing, like the weather is normally a lot more uh, beneficial to, to, to yourself, you know? It might be raining today, but I'm not going to throw away my barbecue because it's raining. I'm just going to wait until it's not raining. I'm just going to accept that it's a bloody nuisance that it's raining, you know, if that makes sense. And that's kind of what that song is about. It's not released. Uh, it's just something I was working on and I put a snippet up on Instagram. But hopefully I'll release it one day. Very good. Very interesting. It got my attention straight away because I like the title and said, Accepting Depression. Because yeah. as you said as well, as you said, I think when you accept something, any issue in your life, any, it could go anywhere, but I think when you accept uh, like something that will work at all, like uh, could be like a depression, anything, when you accept it, it's halfway of the journey, you know what I mean? You, uh, just yeah. accepting it, just accepting it is just halfway of your uh, yeah. of the journey of getting there. I, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to just push it down and you know, I would act like, a, like an idiot, you know, I'd, I'd be mm -hmm. cocky, I'd, I'd drink too much, I would be loud, and it was just me just trying to do anything but accept the fact that I wasn't okay you know and then I started I've been in therapy for years and I, I take steps I take the right steps I try not to drink too much um and yeah anyway I'm I'm going on a bit now but yeah no 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 just, just explain it it's good right yeah. um where do you see yourself leaving when we retire when I retire um oh god I'd love to. I'd love to live somewhere like like Turkey. I'd love. To, I'd love to move there, somewhere quiet, somewhere nice. Um, I don't know if I want to live in the UK, like Brexit Island, but let's let's find out. Yeah, close to the sun and the beach. Yeah, I love the city at the moment. I, I love it, but I don't. I don't know if I will when I'm, you know, when I'm seventy. Cool. Let's get another one. Let's do it. Hey, next question is, um, what is your favorite kitchen smell? Um, I suppose it would be coffee. Morning, I love it. Like Just, yeah, a fresh pot of coffee. I love that smell. Awesome. Yeah. Right. I enjoyed the show so far, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good fun. Yeah. I like the dancing. <laughs> I want to get a 
you know the Brazilian, uh, uh, the Bra they, they say the Brazilian people, when you are born in Brazil, you have two ways, or you become a, a, a football player or you become a dancer. I didn't go either way, <laughs> but at least I tried to dance a little bit at least. <laughs> uh, that's great. <laughs> Next question for you. Um, Tim, what does success mean to you? I, sh I should say happiness. Um, I should say something profound like that, but the truth is, is, you know, when you're an independent musician, it's like you are constantly thinking of, you know, it's really unhealthy actually at the moment. I'm just constantly thinking about what can I do to get people to pay attention to my music? And um, when really I, I shouldn't have that mindset, but I do, you know, and that's very unhealthy. I think success should just mean contentment and, and happiness, you know. I know people who, uh, who are famous and, you know, sell out big venues. And um, I know people, you know, people like, I know very successful people who are, who are miserable. And I know people on minimum wage who are happy as can be. And so I don't really know what it means, success, if I'm being honest. I, I, for me, I think success is a very is a personal feeling. I think you know what yeah. success means to you cannot mean success to me. You know, it's a personal uh, yeah. you know, success. As you said, you can sometimes you, you know, for me, maybe success could be something simple for you, but you know, for for me, it means like a, the word. You know, and for other people, yeah. it's a personal thing about success. It doesn't need Real, to be like yeah. you know money related or you yeah. know like yeah. It's all about um, you feeling good with yourself. That success. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But your question, let's do it. Let's do it. Tim, before the next question, tell me how um, how music came into your life. Music? Um, yeah. I was just obsessed with it when I was younger. I was obsessed with like Green Day and uh, Oasis and Eminem, like all of those big artists. I was, I was just completely obsessed. And then I, uh, I just, I got, I started learning guitar and um, uh, I, the story of how I started playing is pretty, pretty mad actually. I've, I've, I've told it, I've, I haven't told it that much, but basically I was, I was 13 and I was getting guitar lessons, but I was walking along the street and I knew this, uh, I didn't know him, but there was this, this guy there and he was busking and he was nuts. Like he was standing on the bin and like just screaming like the Beatles out of tune, completely out of tune. He was totally like, he was totally just so loud and he was just the biggest character I've known. And he just went, hey you, hey you, come over here and sing me a song. And so I played Time of Your Life by Green Day. And he was like, come on man, you've got to play more, you've got to play more. And so I, I started meeting this guy, I was 13. He must he must have been like, like 18 or 19, so he was a, a lot older than me. And I used to play guitar while he played and we became friends. And, and so I started playing with him. And then one day he said, you need to sing, man, you need to sing. And I was so shy, I was like, no, I can't sing, I can't sing. And he said, if you don't sing, I'll punch you in the face. And I, genuinely, like, and I was like, I'm not gonna sing. And he punched me in the face, like properly punched me in the face, not jokingly, he hit me proper, like with his fist. And like, and so I started singing. I mean, looking back, it was kind of really out of order, but it, I laugh about it now. And so I started singing and singing and singing. And he, and that, he actually got me out of my shell by being so brutal to me. And anyway, I saw him this guy I saw him recently and he'd just come out of um, prison because he took a load of drugs when he was busking he took a load of acid I think and he hit his guitar over someone's head because he thought that guitar he thought that person was a spider because he was hallucinating yeah so that's how I got into music because of that guy and, and he I just I don't speak to him much anymore like he's he's a bit I just can't I'll always, he'll always have a place in my heart, but I've just got to look after my mental health. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. I can't be spending time with someone like that anymore. And I'm really sorry if he sees this. I, I still love you, man. But, and you know. uh, I, I think that's, uh, I think as well, I'm sure that, you know, you're always going to be grateful for him, you know, for that. Always, yeah, I'll always be grateful. Absolutely. He hit me, yeah, hit me in the face. I'll never, I'll never forget him. Very never good, forget. very good. Next right. question is, um, who is your biggest idol and what did you learn from this person? That's a really, really tough question because I, I could probably name about 10. Um, but just for now, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Neil Young. Um, probably because at the moment, um, he just inspires me so much and he's constantly putting out music. He doesn't care what anyone thinks, he does what he wants. 
and you know if you listen to harvest moon or freedom like he released those albums when he was like in his i think freedom he released in his 40s and that has rocking in the free world on it which is one of the biggest songs in the world and for me that's just like i've been through some horrible shit when i hear rocking in the free world i just think like uh, sorry that sounded dramatic you know what i mean but i've been through some stuff and when i hear rocking in the free world it just makes me think like you keep going like no matter what no matter what life throws at me i'm always going to do music and i'm always going to write songs and do the best i can and live live the best life i want to be and be the best person i can and like i get that when i when i when i hear some of neil, neil young songs I, it, it inspires me so much whenever i have a writing block and i can't write i listen to neil young and i'll just be like this is so simple these 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 chords are so simple and the melodies are so simple but it's incredible you know I can do this and Neil Young made me realize as much as a few other people he's not like the be all and end all but he, at the moment he's really helping me whenever I feel demotivated very yeah. good very good I like the answer yeah another question let's do it I think you can dance you're just being modest I think I I I, I <laughs> I'm the sort of person on the dance floor when someone's like, come on, come on, dance. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. And they're like, no, come on. And I'm like, seriously, I'm not doing it. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> okay, next question is, what's the biggest difference between you and your best friends? Hmm. Um, my biggest difference between me and my best friend, I've got a few people I would consider best friends. Um, but to pick one, I think I'm definitely the most uh, sort of hyperactive and intense. And I think my best friend, all of them, I think are, are definitely more patient than me and a bit more like down to work. Whereas I'm a, I'm a bit like, I, I can be really, yeah. I can get really intense and hyper and, you know, dramatic. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> I kind of like, whoa, calm down. Everything's okay. Just be What? patient. Hey, let's go for another question. Oh. Okay, team. Other thing as well, I thought you were providing got my attention. Um, you said about um, writing sad songs. Um, you always all the songs you write is always based like in sadness, or um, no? I I think I just like sad music, and so I end up making a lot of it. Um, but like my recent songs, like. The majority of them have a beat and you know you can move to them and all of that but the words yeah like they're sad i think it's, it's definitely like a reflection of my depression and my head like because huh? i do think a lot of sad thoughts and um you know i catastrophize a lot and i think about the worst case scenario and that's definitely a curse um but writing about it really helps me and you know some of my favorite songs in the world I mean, some of the best songs of Hallelujah by, by Leonard Cohen, you know, that's, that is a devastating song when you listen to words. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's, uh, you know, a religious song, but I don't think it is. I, I think it's a song about, you know, desperation and, uh, you know, shipwreck and, you know, like, I, they just, they've always resonated with me so much and they've, they've made me feel like I'm not alone. I remember once I was very sick I was uh, I was so bad that I actually I went to a mental health retreat where like I was kind of just being checked up on and, and making sure that I was going to be okay and um, and one night uh, I was actually let out and Connor Robust who is he's the lead singer in a in the emo band called uh, Bright Eyes who were quite big in the noughties and uh, he was playing in Shepherd's Bush and, and I got taken out to, to go see him because I had tickets and. Uh, I was so, I was in such a bad way. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know if I wanted to go on. I, I was just a mess. And I, I heard I heard him sing this song called No One Changes. And it's a really sad song. It's so sad. And and he had this lyric. And I tell you what, the lyric was, uh, they say you've got to love yourself. That's, that's the trick. But I've been hating myself since I was a little kid. I know it's sad that the game's rained out and the bleach is emptied out and the turnstile spin. And in the minute I heard that line, I just felt like I'm not the only one feeling this. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm not the only one who feels this awful and other people feel it. And we can all help each other and we can all 
relate to each other and, and we can all talk about it and you know I'm not alone it basically I, I just heard that line when I was in the middle of being that sick and I was like I'm not alone you know there are other people who feel like this and I always knew it but sometimes music just brings it out and makes me helps me realize it and affirms it you know if yeah, that makes I'll, sense so does, that's why that's why I, that's one of the reasons why I write sad songs because I connect them so well no, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, going back to initials though, because literally as well, I, I understand your point because literally for me, I tend, when I listen to music as well, sometimes those very sad songs, melancholic songs, actually it makes me feel good as well because you can, you pay attention to the lyrics. And as yeah. you said, you, you pay attention and you understand more what's going on. Yeah. And you just listen to the song, as you said, you realize that you're not alone. You realize that yeah. this song came from some somebody wrote, you know yeah. what I mean? With same. So yeah, it's, I understand your points very clear. That's for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Next question is, um, what do you think are the best traits for a person to have? I think that's a very complex question, but if I had to answer quickly, uh, I think honesty, um, kindness, and compassion. Compassion and kindness is kind of the same thing. But I think honesty, honesty and kindness are two very important things uh, for people who I have in my life. Um, I can't stand speaking to someone and feeling like I'm talking to an actor. Um, and that's actually something that's caused me a lot of pain, talk, feeling like everyone's being fake, you know, and not being able to connect with, with people. Because that's how a lot of social interactions work. But then that's me being, being silly because no one's going to, no stranger is going to walk up to you and just be like, "Hi, uh, I'm depressed," or "Hi, I miss my ex." You know, they're going to they're going to put on a show, aren't they? They're going to be like, "Hi, how's it going? Nice to meet you." Whereas that's a part of society that actually really gets to me, and that's something I've got to work on. Um, so honesty is very important to me. Um, yeah. Ooh, very cool. Without going off on too much of a tangent. <laughs> Another question. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Um, if you could change something yourself, what that would be and why? About myself? Yeah, if you could change something yourself, what that would be? I would not be a nicotine addict. That's the one thing I would change, but I can't. <laughs> I gave up cigarettes, but I'm on the vape now, which is better. But yeah, that's the one thing. I think there's a lot of things I wouldn't change, but the one thing that I would 100% go back and never have that first cigarette, that's, that's the one thing. Because I just I try and quit all the time, and I'm just the junkie. I'm a junkie how, for nicotine. How old were you when you started out? I had my first cigarette when I was 13, and I started smoking regularly when I was 15. It's sad. Well, actually, for me, it was uh, there was all the tough kids at school, you know, uh -huh. and uh, they stopped picking on me when I smoked because it there was like a good. sense. There's a sense of community. It was kind of like, oh, you got a cigarette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sneak off for cigarettes. You know what I mean? So we sort of bonded over that, and that, it it's actually made me feel stronger and better and tougher. And it's all stupid, you know. It's, but that's that's kind said, of how it's started. Yes, that's what I think. It's a cult, as you said, as a cultural thing. As you said, it's a very good example actually because it makes you feel like it's escape, and it makes you feel like part of the team, part of the group, and you know, yeah, more cool and yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Theme. Three questions left. Okay. Let's do it. I don't want it to end. Don't worry, the future I'm organized now. I'm, I have a, 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 a plan that in a year time, when this show becomes turns one year, I would like to do a second interview with my very first guest. So you are including the list. Get ready. Yes. Yes. I can't <laughs> wait. Get ready. Next question is, how do you make friends? Um. Smoking. <laughs> I'm joking. How, I'm how do I? Cool. How do I make friends, or how does one make friends? How do you? <laughs> I was about to say. I was. I've been yeah. thinking. I was about to say smoking. That's how I make friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I've cool. sort of forgotten because of the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? I've sort of forgotten how I made friends. Um, I can be quite reserved, actually, and quite. Uh, when I'm out, yeah, I, I can sort of keep myself to myself a bit, and I, I can get quite anxious. And uh, but then when I know someone, I can't shut up. You know, when I start talking to someone, I can't shut up. But a lot of the, a lot of the time, people think I'm rude or because I stay quiet or because I haven't really got much to say. And I think it's because I hate small talk. 
So I'll be completely honest, I don't know how to make friends and I'm not very good at it um, because I'm so shy and anxious at times. And I sort of jump between that, to, between being totally extroverted and, you know, on stage uh, or when I know someone, you know, most of my friends will tell you that I don't shut up. Um, but before I know them, I'm very quiet. So definitely slowly. I make friends slowly. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Yeah. I think more actually, uh, for the north, believe it or not, I'm very shy as well. But uh, I'm exactly the same. When I I, I tend not, I, I'm very difficult to start a conversation. But when I start it out, that's it. We just go, 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 and I've stopped. Yeah, 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 for real. And understand. Two yeah. questions left. Oh, I'm gonna miss it. Next question is: um, If you could spend an entire day with a family member, who that would be and why? It, it, it's my my mum, dad, and brother. Uh, my three three children, and I couldn't pick. I couldn't pick one of them. Um, it would be nice to see my brother because um, he lives in uh, he lives in the east. He travels around in China and Taiwan, um, and he came for a whole year. But because the pandemic was on, there wasn't really anything for us to do, which I regret because we don't see each other enough. We're similar ages, so it would be, it would be really nice to spend a day. Uh, you know, a day with my brother, and I miss my mum as well. Um, uh, my dad, um, we sort of go on uh, socially distant cycle rides, um, so I do see him more regularly, but m my uh, my brother and my mum, I think, because I don't see my mum that much at all because she lives in the country, and my brother, I don't, I rarely see, I sometimes don't see for years, and because of the pandemic, we didn't make the opportunity to spend time when he was here. Uh, so I think I would say my mum or my brother. Yes, sir. Ready for the last one? Yeah, I'm gonna miss it. Let's do it. Okay, team, last question. Um, how to describe a perfect friendship? Um, I think understanding and uh, patience and yeah, and kindness, all, all the normal stuff. But I think I love, uh, I love it when things aren't too clingy, you know? I love being able to go, I don't like it, but I think it's great to not see each other for a while. And then when you see someone after six months, because as, as you get older, life happens and people spend less time together and that's sad. But when you do see each other after six months or a year or whatever, if it's still exactly the same as it was, which, I think that's a sign of a, a really good friendship. Um, good. Cool. Yeah. I understand my best friend lives in Canada, so I understand. Yeah. Right, yeah. So let's play now. It's not the end. So let's play now the quick thinking game. So I'm going to give away some words and you just tell me one word that comes to your mind, okay? All right, okay. I'll do my let's, best. Let's start with politics. A nightmare. Love. Necessary. Money. Annoying. <laughs> I like that. I like this one. <laughs> Family. Everything. Life. Pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sex. Nice. Religion. A cult. Fear. Fear. Yeah. Scary. Friendship. Everything. Desire. Desirable. Regrets. Pointless. Success. <sighs> Tough. Wish. Calmness. Happiness. How about if I tell you um, London? One word. Pollution. Music. Everything. And the last one now, Morning Crush. Everything. <laughs> hey, very good, very good. Thanks. Okay. Okay, team, so let's pretend now I'm going to meet your best, fr best friend and I'm going to ask your best friend. Um, 
define team in one positive word and one negative word only. What's your best friend to define yourself? A good heart, but annoying. Oh, cool. <laughs> and that's actually something he specifically said as well. So. Let's play now team in the magic box and you can ask okay. me a question, okay? Right team, you can ask me a question now. Okay, what do you prefer, Brazil or the UK? Tough question, very tough question. I've done already 300 people worldwide and no one asked me this question yet. You put me in the spot now. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna be in trouble. How am I gonna answer this question now? <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna do it? I'm gonna be in trouble. But anyway, um, okay. Right, I would, it's so difficult. My God, you put me in the spot now. Um, Okay, I would, I'm going, right now, I'm going to say I prefer the UK because I feel like London is home for me now. London is home. See, I've yeah. been here for 14 years and uh, it, it wasn't my plans. It's, it's funny how life takes you in a, in a direction that you're not expecting. And I find myself in London and uh, um, four years ago, I was working for Disney World in Orlando for the Disney Cruise, yeah. Cruise Line. And it was the very first time since I've been in London, the very first time that I've been away from London, I've, uh, three months. Two months I was there, I felt homesick. That's when I realized London is home. That's where my place. And then I would say, I would say, um, yeah, I'll pre I pre right now I prefer the UK. Okay. I know it's a re it's an impossible question. I know <laughs> it is. My my heart will be. I'm always I know I'm very patriotic. Yeah. Being up, my heart in Brazil, but right now at the moment because yeah. I feel so home right now. I would say London, like England. Yeah. Still. yeah. Right, um, uh, Tim, uh, just before you go, first of all, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for being so no, kind. No, it's been great. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much for sharing your experience in life. I'm sure in the future when this interview goes live, a lot of people are going to connect with you because I think you you, you mentioned very uh, good topics for the interview. And believe me, people are going to like that because they're going to feel that, they're going to see that they're not alone out there. And it's a very good point. Mm. But I would like to you to sing a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, you know, sure. Shall I sing my, I'll sing my latest single? Yes, please. I hope the sound's okay on this. Um, cool, so this is my latest single. Uh, it's a song called Australian Sun. Uh, I wrote it about lockdown and uh, heartache, uh, breaking up with someone. And um, yeah, it's about a few different things. Uh, full of metaphors that I can't be asked to explain. <laughs> Days I remember Like you and me just getting by You used your words like an anchor That got me so used to the tide So happy winter, you Australian sun You'll never know quite what you are And I hope that you never find out Quite what it is to be this side of you We threw stones at the moonlight And you drilled holes in my boat We stayed awake scanning tragedies For them little songs of hope So happy winter, you Australian sun You'll never know quite what you are And I hope that you never find out Quite what it is to be this side of you I'm still 
walking around dressing up for you looking forward to those get-togethers we will never get i'm still dancing around like it's summertime summer days i remember some i try to forget so happy winter, you Australian sun, you'll never know quite what you are. And I hope that you never find out quite what it is to be this side of you. Thank you. Oh, that's amazing. Amazing. Thanks, beautiful, beautiful. Cheers. Thank you. So on Spotify, that song, Australian Sun, Morning Crush, check it out. Fully produced version. It's, it's already, it's already, um, uh, oh, uh, it's already live already. Already. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's out. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It came out. It came out last week. Very good. Very good. Team, yeah. it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Thank uh, you. Thank you. It's great. Cool. All right. Thanks very All much. Lovely to meet so you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Take Cheers. Care. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.